Hi, I'm Sam Vokes at Wickham Wanderers, and you're listening to Wickham Sound. The Wickham Wanderers Show. Welcome to the latest Wickham Wanderers Show, the first of 2023. I hope you had a fantastic uh, Christmas and festive period. Obviously, we spoke to you in between. Uh, a lot seems to have happened, doesn't it, since, <laughs> since the last show? Uh, coming up in a few moments' time, our match debrief with uh, three P's featured. They are, of course, Plymouth, Peterborough, and Phil. We'll hear from assistant manager Richard Dobson and boss Gareth Ainsworth. Uh, this is all chronological, by the way. Uh, with uh, special thanks, as always, to the Wickham Wanderers Ex Players Association, Jermaine Jockey McSporran uh, will be joining us to uh, chat through his memories of his time at the club and made 186 appearances, scoring over 40 goals. And uh, saw many of them myself. He had a birthday uh, last week as well, or this week, I should say. He's only a year younger than me, didn't realise. Uh, <laughs> that's on the way. Plus, we'll catch up with Wickham Wanderers Women Assistant Manager Dan Weber. Who we spoke to him before he jetted off to America. He's in America now, uh, but he'll be back in time for uh, the uh, Wickham Wanderers Women first team first game of 2023, which is on Sunday against Eastleigh. Plus, uh, we've got a sneaky clip of the uh, first part of the uh, full in depth interview with Gareth Ainsworth, which is on Wanderers TV. It's a bit like our Prince Harry, sort of, you know, they drip, drip feed bits. <laughs> topical uh, that's <laughs> that's on the way later this hour for you to enjoy uh, a bit of a taster of what's to come uh, part one is available on Wanderers TV part two is uh, coming I think either tomorrow or on Saturday I forget which Phil told me <laughs> if you're listening to the podcast version of this it's, it's probably out already <laughs> by now uh, all that and more on the way but first we say a very happy new year to Phil yeah happy new year Colin yeah Plymouth that was a tough day really long journey down it was bad traffic and and we come on, just made eight changes, uh, raised a few eyebrows when the team news came out. Um, but it subsequently become, uh, come to light that this was a plan that Gareth Fainsworth had hatched um, um, a few weeks before, uh, looking at how he could improve the, the Christmas uh, points haul because it's been disappointing in recent years. Um, but nine points from 12 over the Christmas period uh, uh, meant the plan worked. But, you know, they, they lost at Plymouth. Um, and they were unlucky to, I thought, because uh, I think they surprised Plymouth with the lineup, uh, not just the Wicked fans. I think they surprised Stephen Schumacher as well um, with the eight changes. Um, but like Gareth Ainsworth has pointed out subsequently as well, you know, Joe Jacobson, Tafazoli, McCarthy, uh, you know, Striek in goal. Uh, there's some decent players out there. Horgan, um, Kai Kai, you know, these are good players. Hanlon. So, you know, it wasn't overly weak in terms of you know the lineup it's a squad system we understand that and I thought they were unlucky especially when the subs came on in the second half and really started to push um thought Wickham were very unlucky not to grab an equaliser and obviously we, we talked about the, the, the collapse of TJ which is obviously really concerning but but such good news since about that as well yeah and you know full credit to, to the medical staff down at Plymouth both uh both the medical crews of, of Wickham and Plymouth, and also the you know the stadium safety people and her uh, uh, medics and and the local NHS and the hospital there where TJ was taken. Um, it, it was great news to hear that he was discharged a few hours after arriving there after having a few scans and tests, uh, and he's at home recovering. And uh, we hope to see him back in the squad very soon. It's it's horrible to see, isn't it, when when a player's in distress on the pitch and they're down, and you see then. The body language of the, of the other players around as well, calling on the medics quickly and the response was fantastic. And also the Plymouth fans and the Wickham fans, you know, exemplary as well on the whole, which was great to see too. And it was, you know, it was good to speak to Richard Dobson a, a little while after things had calmed down a bit. I think they're a really fluid side. They're, they've got their players playing to the, the maximum of their ability. I think they've done a really good job here, the coaching staff. Um, so I have to give them credit. They, they've built a really good side. And um, at, at times it was it was tough for us, but I thought we finished the game really well, created chances at the end and, and could have nicked a draw. Um, I thought it was a good advert for League One football, actually. Uh, eight changes for Wickham Wanderers coming into this one. Was that because of the heavy schedule over Christmas? Yeah, we decided to change things up a little bit. Obviously, um, previous Christmases have been have been difficult for us and we just needed to do something a little bit different. So we thought it might bring fresh legs to the, the, the club and to the team. You know, we've got boys that haven't played a great deal of football and it gives them opportunities. We want everybody to contribute and, um, you know, that was the idea behind it tonight and I'm sure we'll, there'll be changes again at the weekend and we'll freshen it up again. We can were heavily hit by injury early on in the season uh, was that part of the thinking as well about maintaining the, the fitness of the squad looking at the running now because Wickham are well placed here yeah yeah we it hit us quite hard didn't it the injuries earlier in the season so um, obviously that was a, a tough period for us and um, we, you know, we didn't feel that results reflected the, the ability that we've got within the camp 
but uh, you know we've, had, we've been on a good run over the last few weeks um, we've picked ourselves up we're around the playoff places and we, we really want to kick on second half of the season now it's good to have the likes of Curtis Thompson back in the frame and, um, and one or two others that we've missed um, and now we've got a fully fit squad to, to pick from we can do what we've done tonight and, and change it up a little bit when we need to which I think was something we, we couldn't really do earlier in the season and with all the changes as well, um, Wickham Wanderers were very unlucky not to, to come away with something tonight. There were chances and Plymouth had to throw bodies in the way of the ball several times, especially in that second half. Yeah, I mean, we had a couple of good chances first half from um, set pieces, you know, and uh, that was something that we thought we might get um, tonight. But I was particularly pleased with us towards the end. I thought we um, we took the game to them. In the end, their substitutions were to, to try, hang on to what they had rather than to, to try and get a second, which tells you a little bit about their, their thinking at the end. But um, no... Look, look pleasing that we, we took the game to them towards the end we, we um, you know with a little bit more luck um, a little bit more precision in our finishing at the end we, we might come away from a, from this place with a draw which you know against a really good side would have been a good result tonight as it is well done to them they've got the three points and um, we'll prepare for the next one a couple of chances from set pieces in the first half but the Plymouth goal came from a corner but that must disappoint you guys as well yeah the, the delivery is really good so very much like the one that Sully put in um, Ali headed over um, it was a really flat delivery too flat for Max to come even though it's within the six yard box I think it just evades one of our players at the front post and um, uh, then Scar's got the wrong side of, of Taff and um, got his foot on it and I said to Scar tonight you know, don't score against us before the game so I should never have said it I've jinxed this haven't I really um, but they're, they're, they're a good side they, they put us under a lot of pressure we had to defend a lot of corners tonight and um, you know you can see why they win a lot of games here Great to hear from the assistant manager and also great to read on social media that evening as well that, that Gareth had gone uh, along with Kean as well sort of accompanying um, TJ that must have made quite a difference too Yeah he was you know Gareth walked off with TJ as he was stretched down into the, to, uh, towards the, uh, the medical room at home park and, and subsequently went to A&E with him and you know, I don't. I don't know. Obviously, we're very fortunate in this country that doesn't happen too often. Um, but I don't know if, if, if it's the done thing that managers go with. But Gareth Angels was like, "Look, he's one of mine. I'm going with him," um, and that was that. So, yeah, you know, I'm not surprised at all, really. Are you? We don't really hear that about Gareth Angels. But yeah, it was. Um, it was good that it's been. It's been a good result at the end in terms of TJ's health. Not the result Wickham wanted on the pitch, but uh, to come back. Um, with a, hopefully a fully fit squad, TJ on the mend and back involved soon as well is uh, is great. No, definitely. We wish TJ a speedy recovery. And really interesting, as you said, uh, that you know the manager made those changes down at Plymouth and and really benefited uh, for the game against Peterborough as well. Well, that was the thing, wasn't it? A lot of fans were saying, "Well, what's he up to here? What you know, we could have beaten Plymouth with uh, with our full strength or first choice team." Um, and, you know, hindsight's a wonderful thing, but also we'll never really know, will we? Um, that's that's the beauty of football. But the eight changes went back in um, into Peterborough. A change of system as well. He went to five at the back or three at the back with the wing back systems, and and they killed Peterborough. Absolutely killed them. Uh, first half they contained, and Tafazoli and uh, was uh, was excellent, marshalling the top scorer in League One, uh, Johnson, uh, Johnson Clark Harris, and I think that was one of the key battles of the game. And Peterborough just looked frustrated. Um, Brilliant free kick from Wingy to get us 1-0 up. And then in the second half, Peterborough came out for five minutes and really had a go. Wickham didn't look in any danger whatsoever. And then the second goal really killed it. And I thought it was fantastic performance for Wickham. It was one of those classic away days. But 3-0 against the rival, um, really, I thought was a good marker. And, you know, Peterborough have subsequently fired their manager and re-employed another old manager. So, uh, as a result of that as well. So, it shows you the intensity now that we're facing in this second half of the season where teams are all expecting to be in that top six. And Wickham are very much in that shake-up as well. But, like we say, the eight changes at Plymouth, it put pressure on the result a little bit because it was a, it was a tactic to be fresh and it put pressure on the result. But what a result it was. And, and Gareth Ainsworth was delighted uh, after the game when I spoke to him. Happy New Year to everyone and happy New Year to all those fans. You know, they didn't show up all game. They were brilliant. They were brilliant. Let me address those first. They've come up in numbers. I'm, I'm sure there's been a few headaches in the cars today, hangover last night, but not with my boys. We were tucked up in bed in a hotel, which again, the Cougs have, have backed me to, to prepare right. But... They never stop singing right to the end. And it does spur you on. It spurs me on as a manager, never mind the players. So thank you and Happy New Year to all the Wickham fans today. Home and away, they, they were outstanding. Now, Gareth, before Christmas, you said you're going to do things a bit differently this festive campaign. <laughs> uh, we've got through it now. Nine points from tw- from a possible 12. Uh, are you happy with those changes and what were they? 
yeah, obviously, you know, everyone knows now that, that my, my plan was to change the whole team up for that middle game. You know, everyone b- besides Jason and, and Taff was changed um, and Jason was changed again today. So I look back at our recent results over five years and I thought, that we haven't picked up a great load of points over Christmas period. What What is wrong, you know? And we went in tactics, we went in performances, then we went on team selection, went picked pretty much the same team for these three games every time. And you run out of steam, you do, you know, and... and I thought the difference today was the energy, the pressing that we had, the battling, the, the, you know, it looked like we could have gone a lot longer and, and people were tired at the end. It's difficult when you're 3-0 down, you, you know, you, the game goes away from you, but my boys were up for it today and, uh, and I think changing up might not have worked. I might have played the same team and won 5-0, but I'm really happy where we are, you know. It's, it's a tough place to come. Grant McCann is a brilliant manager. He's been championship, he's been promoted to championship, he's kept teams in the championship. That, that's a big one for us because of that because he's got a good side here a very good side and the home record's really good I'm just really pleased that the boys who deserve all the credit when they come on this pitch they believed they gave everything and uh, some cracking goals as well and, and now really really pleased with the start to the year It sounded like it was a plan that has been a long time in the making possibly when the fixture list came out <laughs> It's been about four weeks ago you know. I, I just thought to myself you know why when I've now got this squad, and no disrespect to years gone by, but we haven't had the squad we've got now. We've, we've, I'm changing light for light, you know, McCarthy, Grimmer, uh, Jacobson, Obita, you know, I'm, Farino and, and, and Mawson, you know, obviously I'm giving a lot to Chris there because I've had a fantastic career, but you, you do have more confidence. Gabe, Thompson, Gakai, you know, Hanlon, what changes I've got, you know, and I can't thank the Cougs enough for that. But to do it and... We almost got away with it on when, on Thursday, you know. So close, just hit the target in one of those shots at the end. I think we get a point there as well. But, you know, the boys believed today. They all did it right yesterday. Went to a hotel in Peter with a, Thank God there was no parties going on and there's no other guests there. It was just open for us, I think. But, um, you know, I, I had a little walk around the corridors at 12 midnight, ringing a few people. I didn't hear any noise, so I thought my boys were asleep. They're going to need to because Peterborough is one tough place to come. So to get a 3-0 win, I think, was sensational. And uh, and they deserved it. They really did, you know. Um, there was a shape change second half. Uh, Grant went to a, he started with a five, which we thought he would, and then he, he, he went to a four at the back. So, you know, within a minute, I think we changed to, to match that. And the boys are so good that when I give them the, the messages in training, they, they do it seamlessly, you know. And uh, David Wheeler and the Swiss Army Knife everywhere. And... Um, I just thought that uh, it was a real marker for, for Wickham Wonders. But, you know, it's only one game. It doesn't make a season. We've got a, a week off now and Sheffield Wednesday coming to town. So it's going to be huge. But um, days like today are nice. And, uh, and I'm, uh, you know, there's no genius. There's no, there's no, it's just changing a few bodies up and, you know, giving the boys the belief they could go and do this. One player we haven't seen amongst all the changes over the festive period is Alfie Mawson. Uh, any news on Alf? Yeah, Alfie's obviously we all know Alfie uh, it carries a problematic knee, and uh, and I think he just joined it in one of the recent games. I think it was Ipswich game, and uh, and once you do that, you know he's had a few operations on that knee. It's best just to keep him out. But with Tafazoli, Grimmer, Jacobson as the back three. It's two two players who who have played fullback for me, so they don't mind going out wide and defending, which they did today. Tough for me was imperious today absolutely fantastic you know and I, you know, I, had, a, I had a bit of a chat with him about Thursday I, I, you know, I thought there was one or two things we could have worked on but today he's given me no case to, to pull him at all you know, he's, a, he's a, great, a great lad a real good character and you know, coming to his old club and scoring from that corner I think was a nice moment for him and, uh, and he had a real battle up with Johnson Clark Harris who again one of the top strikers in the league so as I say the players that Peter have got they're a very good side so that for me is a real scalp and um, you know, I wish Peter were all the best, but um, we, we go on to Sheffield now in two weeks. Uh, Lewis Wings' goal is pretty special as well, both of them. Yeah, I've ribbed him a couple of times saying it. He takes free kicks at the end of training every day and, and he nails them, honestly. He's as talented as Lewis. And, and again, the Cougs have backed me to get these sort of players in. He's nailed it today. That free kick was brilliant. And then he strike for the second one. Honestly, he does that in training every day. And the lads are like, wow. So for us, it's like, who's that? Was that Wingy? Yeah, it, it's not like sensational, but... It was for the fans, and it was a, it was a nice New Year's present for all those who've travelled up, you know. And uh, I just want to say that the, you know, this club is is a small club, but to be fighting amongst all the teams that we're fighting against, we've got to be so proud. And uh, and as long as as long as I'm manager here, that you'll get fight for these boys, and and we'll find a way. We'll always find a way. I'm really proud today. You take a few free kicks into the training as well, right? No, no. 
<laughs> Only when Jimmy Vollard comes to town, but no, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm getting a bit past it now. I'll leave it to the boys. You know, like I say, please give the boys all the credit they deserve today, and not just the boys today, the boys who played Thursday and the boys who played last Monday, because I'm grouping these games together. They've all played their part, and it's enabled me to to get fresh legs in each game, which uh, I think has uh, has made a bit of a difference. The last time Wickham had a weekend off uh, in the season, uh, they went into it on, on the back of a defeat and a disappointing performance. This is quite the opposite. So uh, how will you prepare now ahead of Sheffield Wednesday in that long running? Listen, I've given I've give the boys a few days off. We, 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 the only day we had off this week was Christmas Day, you know, and, uh, and I think it's important that they know that I'll give them something back if they'll give me the efforts that they did. But as I've always said, you've got Sam Volks and Gareth McCleary, two Premier League players, two internationals, who are willing to close people down like they did in, in the first half. You can't go wrong. The rest have to follow. Really, really proud. And uh, I say thanks, lads. You've, uh, you've given me a couple of weeks where there's no stress. And, uh, well, we'll probably start stressing next week for Sheffield Wednesday. But, no, thank you, everyone. And support was great. Safe trip home. Let's go again in two weeks. Uh, great to hear from the manager, as always. And, and as we've discussed recently, you know, Lewis Wing getting another goal, it's really sort of starting, to, starting to show his talents as well. Yeah, Wing is really settling down there. It reminds me a bit of last season when he first joined. He kind of took a little while to get settled into the team and up some match fitness. And then he got a couple of goals away at Crew. And then the red card came at Gillingham. Um, and he, he missed three games. And it kind of really uh, lost his momentum. Um, and then pre-season he picked up a couple of injuries um, but he's really sort of settled into that midfield role alongside Josh Gowen now and his, his range of passing is a joy to watch at times and we know what he can do in terms of shot wise from outside of the box but two excellent finishes, two very very different finishes but two technically brilliant finishes from Lewis Wing uh, that's five goals for the season now and yeah he's looking settled in there and Sheffield Wednesday up next and one of his former clubs and uh, I don't think he had a good time at Sheffield Wednesday, so it'd be lovely to see Lewis with a bit between his teeth and continuing that scoring run against the Owls. And it really feels like that that uh, points tally you mentioned over the fix- festive fixtures that you know that the table where, where we are in the table is looking a lot healthier now. Yeah, I mean they kind of got themselves into the frame just before Christmas, but I think yeah, nine points from twelve against the teams we we're up against. I, I don't think any Wickham fan would have turned that down had they been offered that prior to Christmas. So I think a really, really good festive period. It's a really good platform now to build on. Um, you know, We look at the break this week of the FA Cup third round. We were meant to play Oxford. They're playing Arsenal at the Kassam in the third round of the FA Cup, a, a glamour fixture for them. It means we've got the week off and you can look at this in two different ways. We did it earlier in the season, didn't we, when there was a break after Cheltenham, when we had a really flat performance and a, and a poor result. Um, and Gareth said, look, it's come at a good time. We can focus and and, and, uh, and fix what we need to fix and work on what we need to work on um, and come back. And they, and they responded with a win on the first game back. We're going into this break now on a, on a run of good momentum, it seems. So, um Slightly different, um, but I think Gareth is taking it as a, as a way to rest the players and, and also reward them a little bit for the hard work they've put in over Christmas because I think they had one day off uh, over Christmas on Christmas Day as a squad, uh, as a staff. Um, so he's given them all a few days. Um, so hopefully uh, we'll see the benefit of that against Sheffield Wednesday. Um, you know, in the past as well, fans will look at that and go, well, would they be a bit ring rusty when they come back or would they be fit and raring to go? Um, we will only find out on the 14th. But um, yeah, I think it's good that they're getting a bit of a breather because it's a long old season. Uh, we're just under half halfway to go. Brilliantly placed. Um, injuries are looking good. Squad shape's looking good. The position of the table's looking good. Um, people starting to implode a little bit around us as well. People are now taking loans back. So Plymouth have lost Morgan Whitaker because he's, uh, he's been recalled by parent club Swansea. Um, and Wickham don't have this loan situation because they don't have any loanees in the squad. So it's great when your loanees come in and they're fit and firing and they're doing fantastically well and, and creating goals and getting you points. But when it comes up to the halfway point and there's a recall clause, then he could be in trouble. Wickham have got know what they've got. Um, I understand they won't do any loan business in this window. Who knows what we'll do in this window? But um, it won't be a disruptive influence. It'll be adding to the squad. Um, I'm sure there'll be a few going out as well on loan um, to get game time. But yeah, it's going to be an interesting month because people will be doing business. I mean, there's rumours that Ipswich are keen to add even more sort of firepower to their squad. Um, the embarrassment of riches they've got in this in this league. Um, 
you know, and, the, and their position in the table reflects that as well. But they're going to want to get that automatic. Plymouth keep doing well. Ipswich are up there, Chef for Wednesday. It seems quite staggering that one of those isn't going to get automatically promoted. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, big month for Wickham. They're all big now between now and May, but this one's going to be quite pivotal, I think. It's always an interesting time, isn't it, when the transfer window opens and there's loads of speculation flying about. I saw, I saw one fan with Connor Wickham uh, leaving Forest Green that uh, Wickham to Wickham would be would be an ideal sort of opportunity to, <laughs> to just to have just for the name. Well, yeah, so the name thing uh, would be fantastic, and I wasn't overly impressed with him when we um, when we played at Forest Green. Um, it was a weird system that he was in because he's, he's a big, you know, a big target man, um, big striker. He got nine goals in twenty games at Forest Green. Um, but he was playing deep, so he was having to come and get the ball. It's a very odd system that they had. Um, you know, whether someone can utilise him a bit more, but, you know, 9 in 20 for a team down the bottom of the table is good figures, and he's only 29. Um, so I'm sure someone will be picking him up. Um, we'll see who it is. I mean, I've no idea who, but, like, it was MK last season. He came on in the playoffs semi-final and didn't do too much. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. As you say, really interesting time. I must take the opportunity to ask how you'll be spending your, your FA Cup weekend. Well, um, looking perhaps to um, go to another non-league game as well to see if I can find the next Stanis Rometty. <laughs> <laughs> That's not part of my duties, but it's just out of my own interest, by the way. I, I don't <laughs> worry anyone that I um, have any influence on who we sign. I have absolutely none. We've got an excellent recruitment system that we can on just as, uh, as the team of Flex. But yeah, out of my own enjoyment, I might dip down into non-league again just to... Uh, to see how we are down there, you know, to keep it real, as they say. Well, have a great weekend. Enjoy whichever game you end up at and uh, look forward to catching up next week. Cheers, Colin. Brilliant chat to you, Phil. As you can hear, his voice improving after the, uh, uh, the suffering slightly over the, uh, the, the uh, festive fixtures. Don't forget you can hear uh, the full extended, uh, the full versions of uh, the chats with Assistant Manager Richard Robson and Gareth Hainsworth on Wanderers TV. Online, on Radio Player and on 106.6 FM. This is Wickham Sound. Still to come on the Wickham Wanderer Show, we'll round up the uh, loan moves, both in and out at Adams Park, as the transfer window is open, of course, for January. We'll hear from the manager as well, uh, a clip from uh, the uh, extended interview, which uh, has been done with uh, Phil and him on Wanderers TV, which you can see the first part of now, and uh, the second part is uh, out tomorrow, slash whenever you're listening to this, it might be out already, if you're catching up. Uh, you never know. Uh, so stay tuned for that. But first, with thanks to the X-Players Association, been catching up with uh, fantastic winger Jermaine McSporran, who really enjoyed uh, watching during his time at the club. And uh, obviously, uh, as he recalls, quite a fan's favourite Adams Park as well. From the time I signed, um, fans made me feel so welcome um, from day one, to be honest. Um, and I think that's sort of proven even to, to the current day what well, such a family club they are, you know, um, and, and the things that are achieved even, even to the current date, um, I think is exceptional. So, but yeah, fans are absolutely brilliant. So I think it was always, always happy to play and turn up and, and, and put the effort in, you know, because, you know, you did it for them as well, as much as you did it for the team and the manager. So yeah, pleasure. Because do you think a lot of that's to do with your position? Because I know, you know, traditionally people like Steve Guppy and Nathan Tyson and, and fans really like, you know, wingers, don't they, who are, who are really exciting and, and get them off their seats. Yeah, I, I Obviously, for me, it was my, my my playing career was always as a winger and, and sort of more of attacking, forward minded. Um, but then, obviously, certain managers like to play me straight up the top through the middle. So for me, obviously, with with a bit of pace behind me, it was always um, always sort of got the fans on their feet, you know. So you had that anticipation, which is I knew I had that when I was playing, and that was the whole point, you know. That was what I thrived on, trying to trying to excite the crowd and you know score goals. Not the many of them though. <laughs> what was your earliest memories of your time at the club? Literally from the day I arrived. It was from the day I arrived for my medical, from my sort of first training sessions. I think we were back at Bisham Abbey at the time. Um, we used to train down there. And yeah, it was just the early memories and certain players. Steve Brown obviously took me under his wing a little bit, sort of looked after me. I think that's where the nickname Jockey came from originally. It's just the whole thing was sort of surreal for a, for, for a period of time, for the sort of first first couple of months, sort of coming from non-league and and then obviously going into the pro game. So, yeah, I, I would have to say from day dot, to be honest, day dot earliest memory. And there was such a mixture of youth and experience in, in that in that side, wasn't there, that you played in? 
yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, obviously, like I said, I wouldn't even class myself as one of the youngsters at the time. Um, I think I was uh, 21 myself, 2021. 20, um, but there was a lot of experience in there, um, obviously with Dave Carroll and Steve Scott and I think Paul McCarthy was there at the time. And then like the youth coming through as well, young Martin Lee and, and Danny Sender, Ian Sempemba. There was a good mixture. And then obviously the experience and the Michael Simpsons. And, you know, there was, there was a good core of players. And I think that's why we bonded really well. And you must have really enjoyed your kind of role in the in the team as well. I know on the uh, the ex player Association Facebook page where JDT's put that you'll be on uh, this evening's show, Martin was saying that, you know, how quick you were and, and that must, you know, really help with, with your game and, and to, you know, to, to fit in well with the rest of the team too. Yeah, obviously it does help. You know, I'm, I'm signing from non-league and I know a lot of the lads are expecting to think, well, OK, what's he going to come in and do? And, you know, and I think obviously... Once I did sort of open my legs a little bit, it sort of gave an idea, well, actually, yeah, he might have a benefit for this team. So, um, yeah, it does help, you know, if you've got something that can benefit the team in any way. So, yeah, like I said, it was my game at the time and so I wanted to play. And everyone remembers that great cup run. Obviously, there was the injury for yourself, but it must have been so great to be part of the team at the time leading up to that. Yeah, totally. Um, from the early rounds, you know, I think I, I played in the early rounds. I don't know if it was Harrogate or an then Millwall game. But then obviously the cup run after that was just sensational. I don't think it would ever be matched again, you know, for what we achieved that season. With the injuries that we had, players that we were signing, obviously Roy Essendo and, and that situation, you know, we couldn't have been in the worst situation to reach a semi final and we managed to do it. Um, but obviously that's credit to the lads. But once again, you know, it was even the injured ones on the sidelines. We was all right behind everybody, so we all stuck together. And it was a group effort, you know. And a huge blow for yourself to get that double cruciate injury as well. Yeah, yeah it happens. First one, I think I, I did that a week and away, um, sort of early in the game. Didn't really feel too much. Um, and then as the game went on, progressed towards, so I think I made it all the way to half-time. Um, then... When I got inside at half time, then my, my, my knee just ballooned. Um, and then obviously Dave Jones, a physio, just had a look at it and said, no, we're not going anywhere. And then obviously the results proven that, yeah, I did my first cruciate. Um, and then to do a second one after doing the recovery for eight months and then sort of get back into fitness again, back into playing and then getting the sharpness back and then. I think it was sort of towards the end of the season and then I did my other knee. Yeah, that was disappointing, that one, yeah. Did you find it especially tough, sort of mentally as well? Because obviously it's such a long time for you to be out or or did you have that sort of focus? Just I remember people saying, you know, you were out on mountain bikes and stuff and just, you know, really really getting back. For the first one, it was my first ever real injury. So I think my focus was always there. So it was sort of the unknown. So I was happy just to hit it head on and we're going to do this and, I know it's going to be a long road, but you got that motivation. And with Dave Jones and uh, the physios there not helping you out, and Big Terry Evans, you know, you had that support. And plus, obviously, the other players that were in the, in the, on the injury list at the time as well. So you all sort of, you're your own little entity, but at the same time, we all sort of drove each other on. So I think the first one was the easiest, but the second one, um, no, that was tough. I think that was really tough then, when that one happened. Because um, I already knew what I'd just been through. So I had to sort of mentally prepare myself to do it all again. And I think that was a tough one. Yeah, so, yeah, very tough. You must be really proud, though, to have played, you know, not too far off nearly 200 games uh, for the club and, and, and under certainly, you know, Laurie and John, uh, really, really popular and ever-present in the team pretty much. And I guess they were quite two, two very different managers to play under. Yeah. When, obviously, Laurie turned up, to be honest, he, he sort of gave a bit of hard time sort of first month or so, sort of cut the months. And he, he, he felt that I wasn't given enough. So he sort of gave me a bit of a kick at the backside, to be honest. And he was on my case for a little while. But credit to him, if that's what he sort of felt needed to be done. And I think he got the right reaction anyway. And it was a, it was a nice time under his tenure. I, I enjoyed it, you know. I enjoyed it. And then obviously it was obviously sad when he left. And then obviously the situation when John Gorman came in. And then once again, as an experience, yeah, pleasure. It was a pleasure to, to 
play under him once again. Uh, fabulous personality, uh, such a bubbly character. Made you feel good. So after with Sancho leaving, we all needed picking up, and it was the right person to come in and pick everybody up. To be honest, and are there any particular games or goals or occasions that really stand out during your time at the club? Yeah, that's, that's several. Uh, I think the home game against Fulham um, stands out in the FA Cup because that was that was that was the season after we'd done the semi final. So I'd missed out that year before. I really enjoyed that game. I felt we, we could have won that. And it wasn't even the goal or anything like that. It was nothing special because I think I missed it on my first attempt to hit it. And then I caught it back on the swivel. So it was a bit of a scuff shot, really. But um, the actual day, the evening itself, the occasion, yeah, I do remember that fondly. And then obviously the home game live on Sky when we beat Oxford United and managed to score. So that one sticks in my head, especially being a knockered lad anyway, locally. So, yeah. No, it's, yeah. it's really nice isn't it, to have those those memories. And as you say, it's such a, a special club, a family club, and, and the one that obviously is, is special to you. Yeah, like I said, even to the day now, nothing changes. I, I, I check the results. I look for fixtures and who's playing who. And obviously, there's only one that I'm checking first. And it's always, always, always the chairboys. So I'm always watching out obviously watching current form and really disappointed that um, they'd made it to the championship and they couldn't have the crowds there. And, you know, I'm really disappointed for the fans for that because that was a great achievement to get to the championship and not to be able to play in front of your, your home crowds for that whole season. You know, it's just a shame. It's such a shame. So, but yeah, definitely think that they can do it again and hopefully they can repeat it and then the fans can turn up this time and, 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 get, and get that experience. And such a shame that you left when you did as well, because obviously you know, a new manager comes in and I suppose wants to play his own sort of style of game and bring in his own players as well. Yeah, um, Tony Adams came in and it was OK for sort of the first period, first little bit of time. Because he's coming in to find his feet, looking at players. We're trying to obviously gauge what he wants from us and, and what he thinks. And it's that you go for that little period. But yeah, um, he came in and just made it clear that I probably ain't going to be part of his plans as his budget wouldn't stretch. Um, and that was obviously myself and a few others. So, Warsaw have come in and they want to take you on loan to the end of the season. And it was just literally a meeting just like that. And I was like, okay. He said, but go home, have a think about it. And I was like, okay, fine. Yeah, disappointing to me. It was disappointing. But then obviously I took the opportunity to go to Warsaw because obviously I felt then that obviously I wasn't wanted at the club anymore by him and I wasn't part of his plans. Obviously not by the club itself, but by Tony Adams and his plans. So, you know, I had to think about taking an opportunity to go to the championship. Obviously, if it didn't work out, then obviously we go back to the drawing board. But it was an opportunity, so I took it. Yeah. And then you had the opportunity to come back as well. Yeah. Yeah, and that was, that was, that was the strangest thing because... Um, I think we had a golf day for the lads at the end of the season, charity golf day, and I came back for that. And Tony just spoke to me, pulled me to the side and said, look, I'm back and have a chat. I said, yeah, of course. So I met up, come to the ground. Uh, we had a chat. And it was just the complete opposite to what I'd been told sort of four months before. And I always worry if some opinion can change quickly, just like that. And I just didn't feel as if it was, I, I felt like it was more, he wasn't getting what his plans done that he wanted to do. It was sort of last minute and I need to sort of try and claw some players back. It felt like I'd, I'd been pushed out, but because his plans had worked out, he was trying to sort of redeem himself. And yeah, so it, it, it just didn't inspire me to come back, you know, and that was a disappointing thing because I, I didn't want to leave in the first place. So pretty much. Um, so yeah, it was the whole thing sort of inspired in a way where it sort of yeah, it didn't turn out the best result really for all parties. So overall, how do you look back at your time at the club? With fond memories, always with fond memories. Even when I visit back now and I pop back, it's it's always lovely to be back. You know, old faces still the same, but yeah, I've just got nothing but happy and fond memories of the club from start to finish. And do you still keep in touch with with teammates from that time as well? Yeah, I do. 
Um, I've stayed in touch with Steve Brown quite often. We still manage to get out on the golf course and play a bit of golf. So, yeah, we keep in touch. And, and it's the same with a few others, just via Facebook and just, just talking and birthday wishes and things like that. So, yeah, we need to do a meet-up, really, to be honest. And what do we find you doing these days? So now I, I work, I work um, for the NHS. So I'm a, I'm a medical courier now for them. I've been there for several years now, so I sort of do urgent blood samples and blood transfusion and blood units from hospital to hospital in between here and Oxford. Oh, I must feel you find really rewarding. Yeah, yeah, I have done so. It's, it's been a tough time, actually, obviously, through COVID and everything else. For me, it's been non-stop, so um, it was probably even more busier for me to keep working. And, yeah, I enjoy my job, really enjoy it, really appreciate it. Yeah, have an enjoyed nice time. Do you really miss football, or are you quite sort of pleased in a way that, that that's kind of done now and you're, and you're doing something else? Yeah, well, I, I stayed in touch with football afterwards for a little bit when I finished, when I retired, and I moved back to Oxford so I started at Oxford United for a little bit um, doing the coaching with young kids um, after school club things like that getting a bit of experience um, and then progressed on to helping out as an assistant for the United under 13s team at the time and then obviously more recently sort of non-league with Kidleton did a couple of seasons there uh, managed to get them promoted also as well um, yeah so I sort of kept in touch but yeah, I think my focus had turned sort of more priorities and my wife and children. And so, yes, yeah, so I sort of, I didn't have the time, if that makes sense, you know. I missed the playing, but at the same time, I, I don't. I'm, I'm, quite, I'm quite settled. And it's really nice that you're not too far away. And as you can say, as you say, you can pop back to Adams Park and it must be so nice for you to, to see how the team are doing now. Yeah, I'm half hour up the motorway. So, like I said, if, if they ever want me to pop up, I'm, I'm happy to come and visit. Yeah, it's nice to be close, so I know that I can always get by uh, and come and catch a game. So hopefully I can pop up soon. And does it feel like you're a, a real kind of part of the, the team's progression, part of the foundation of where they are today, if you like? I think everybody's played their part. I think every, every player that's come into the club, every player that's left, every manager, coaching staff, you know, backroom staff, groundsmen, everybody's played their part from the start to finish, like I said, because I said, because the, the club's always been focused on that way. It's been a well-organised, uh, well-run family club. And I think there is no sort of one person, apart from at the moment, you can say, you can put your hand on, it would be actually Gareth Ainsworth for the job that he's done, taking them forward. And that's what he's done. He's taken them forward. So we was always building blocks and building steps. But I think the achievements that they've achieved now is, is, is everybody's part. Everybody's part. Well, it's been a real pleasure to speak to you. Thank you so much for any of your time. No, you're more than welcome. Thank you for having me. Great chat to you, Jermaine McSporran. Don't forget, uh, throughout the season here on uh, the Wickham Wanderers show, we'll be speaking to uh, more former players, thanks to the Wickham Wanderers Ex-Players Association. Online, on Radio Player, and on 106.6 FM, this is Wickham Sound. Still to come on the Wickham Wanderers show, we'll hear more from manager Gareth Ainsworth. We've got some loan news for you as well. Just a reminder, you might have heard us mention on uh, last week's show, together with the uh, Wickham Wanderers Foundation, the football club, supported by principal club partner Dreams, uh, have uh, announced plans for a warm hub at Adams Park, which will be during the winter months uh, for uh, local senior residents to enjoy a free hot meal, various activities, as well as the use of the stadium facilities to socialise with fellow guests as well. It runs every Tuesday and Thursday between 5 and 8 in the evening. It kicks off, as I say, Tuesday the 10th of January and runs until the 28th of February. It's also supported by the Buckinghamshire Council. Warm Hub is also accessible uh, to anyone who's over the age of 65 along with a plus one guest. Pre-booking is required uh, for uh, any access or dietary requirements that you may have as well. You do need to let the club know in advance for family days, open days and uh, the entire community are uh, very welcome as well uh, will be uh, communicated in due course so you can find out more by checking out the Wickham Wanderers website and book your place on there as well if you're a regular listener to the show uh, you'll know that uh, always keen to uh, follow Wickham Wanderers women as well assistant manager of the first team is Dan Webber and uh, of course uh, the chair girls have been taking a bit of a break over Christmas ahead of the resumption of their season this Sunday I've been chatting to Dan about uh, how positive it's been it was quite a busy first half of the season uh, we had lots of new players come in over the summer and we've spent a long time trying to work out our best formations and and the right players in the right positions 
And so, yeah, absolutely, it was a good opportunity after a few games at Christmas to be able to then sit down, work out where we are and um, and get ready for the second half of the season. I mean, it really feels like a team that's in transition and obviously some of the results have been a, a, a bit disappointing, I guess, but the, the performances you must have been so pleased with. Yeah, that's the thing. The performances have been good. Um, in a lot of the games have been very tight. Um, some we've made some silly errors and we've given goals away and, and that's proven our downfall on occasion. But by and large, the performances have been good and they've been improving and that's always encouraging. As I said, we've brought in a lot of new players during the summer and it always takes time for those players to get to know each other, to get to know how they play and what they demand of each other. And so that is coming together. Um, it would be nice if it had come a little bit quicker, but it's just not always possible the way that um, the way football works. And as I say, when you bring so many new players together that haven't played um, previously, it does take a bit of time. It's just a natural part of the game. And quite a process, I imagine, for yourself and Carl to put together the team and you know see who fits best in which positions. Absolutely, yes. I mean, we, when we came in, we had to. We came in at the end of the previous season, and we had to quickly assess the players that were there try and look at what their positions were. A lot of the players would come and say, this is where I play. But obviously we had to assess that, um, see who we were left with, and then work over that sort of May, June, July period in order to be able to bring in the players that we think we needed. Um, and obviously there's still there's still work to do on that. Well, I'm sure that come the end of this season, um, the natural progression is that some players will will leave, some will maybe go off to university. And so we'll again be looking to either plug gaps that we feel are there already, um, at the moment, or uh, fill in of any of the players that do actually end up leaving the club. Some of the signings that you have made, though, do seem to have integrated and fitted in so well, and and obviously some of the, the players that have come through from the reserves and the under 18s as well to, to step up. Yeah, that's been really encouraging. I mean, some of the players that we brought in, obviously, we knew um, from previously, so we knew what they were capable of. Um, but it was a question of of them just fitting in to the team and fitting into the other players. And what's really encouraging are the players that are coming through from the under 18s and the reserves. It's it's really um, rewarding to see that happening. We've obviously got good coaches on those teams as well, and they're they're helping those players and bringing those players through. And so it, it bodes well for the future that we've got a good sort of conveyor belt of players that can come from those lower age groups um, and the reserves and come and, and step up to open age football and tier five football and hopefully um, tier four football in the future. So what are some of the things that have pleased you most about the games that you've had in the season so far? I think in, in most cases, we've we've actually um, played very well and we've we've dominated a lot of the teams, which was slightly unexpected, as I said, because we had so many new players. But we've dominated those teams in many cases and even the teams that are sort of near the top of the league. We've we've given them a good run for their money. We gave um, Ascot a very good run uh, with a draw and then a fairly narrow defeat. Um, and so just the, the, the players' ability to express themselves and their enthusiasm and confidence to go out there and put into practice what we what we do on the training pitch and just that confidence to say yeah we can do this and let's let's give it a go and and they're not afraid to get stuck in to these games and and so once we've got that foundation once you've got that sort of that passion and desire then obviously things like getting them to play in certain formations and getting them to play together will will naturally come and great character shown by the players as well. There have been a number of occasions where they've gone several goals behind and, and have come back to draw level. Yeah, sometimes I feel like maybe they enjoy the challenge of that just because of the way that we seem to... Um, it did it a few games in a row and we've, we've gone sort of two, three, four goals down. Um, and whilst we haven't always been able to come back and, and um, salvage those games, they have at least, as you say, shown a lot of courage to, to do that and a lot of ability as well. It's, it's some real mental strength there to be able to say, I'm not, my head's not going to drop. We're going to keep going. We believe in what we're doing and therefore just keep ploughing on. And, and as you say, we've we've come back from sometimes when we've been 4-0 down, got it back to sort of 4-3 and unfortunately not quite able to make that final step and, and get the last the fourth goal or even the fifth goal. But as you say, encouraging that they never give up. They're a great bunch and they 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 do keep going and they, they, they obviously love the club. Um, a lot of them have been here for a while. Uh, some of them are new but have taken to... Uh, what we're trying to do here and take into the whole ethos of the club and 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 really sort of and, and put their all into every game. And playing at Adams Park was a real highlight of the year as well. Yeah, that was fantastic. And obviously um, the players love that. I mean, it was it was great to just sort of walk out of the tunnel and, and sort of into a into a proper big stadium like that. And luckily it didn't phase the the players. They they took to it and they rather than phase it phase them, they actually rose to the occasion and and played a really good game that day. Um, the scoreline would suggest that perhaps it was closer than maybe our, the, the play was, but 
but yeah, they um they loved it and and obviously they wanted they want to go back there as much as they can. Um, we understand the limitations that they might be on doing that, but hopefully in the future we'll be able to play more games there and and more of our players will be able to experience just playing in a stadium like that. And also with the fans as well, we encouraged a lot of fans to come. I think there was about 400, uh, 500 fans there that day. And most, if not all of those players have probably never played in front of a, a crowd that large. And so that also gave them a huge lift on the day and and, and they loved it. And something else which seems to work really well is the, is the leadership structure that you have within the team, you know, the senior players having that extra kind of responsibility, if you like. Yeah, they do. And they, there's there's obviously a few. There's a leadership group. Um, I know much of that is sort of made in the press sometimes when you look at teams around. But there is always and has to be a leadership group. It can't come down to one person who's sort of supposed to rally the troops when when things get tough on the pitch um, and even off the pitch. So it's great that we have that uh, that group of players. Some of the, Most of them have been here for a while. There are um, some of the older players as well as it happens. And so that works in our favour, having them players that have played for for Wickham for a few years and they're older they're able to take on that responsibility and the other players um accept that and and rise to that and they listen and they and they the the spirit within the team is is uh, superb now and I know when Carl uh, first took over he joked that he was he was asked a lot about you know if he has goals and targets and things they'd like to achieve do you, do you set particular goals for, for 2023 as well we we do set goals um i think with where we are in the season at the moment and the results we've had obviously they've as we said the performances have been good the results have not necessarily been there so we'll be looking really to consolidate now in the second half of the season make sure that we finish um the season strongly we don't have too many games left actually it's a fairly small league um so we've got um four or five games left we want to make sure that we finish off those games well and that season the season well and that will give us a bounce going into next season and obviously this summer we won't be expecting so many players coming in so we'll be it we'll start next season with a much more solid foundation a team that's used to playing with each other um, even if it's supplemented by a few uh, additions during the summer but yeah we're, we're really now looking to to consolidate and, and and bounce into the next season. And a trip to Eastleigh first up for, for 2023. You must go into that with a lot of confidence, especially the way the team has played, as, as you say, against teams like Ascot and, and some of the top teams in the division. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's going to be tough. They're all, um, all these games are tough, but um, it's a fairly tight league. But yeah, we definitely, we go into all these games with um, with real confidence, um, even off the back of a, a defeat when we know we've played well. We always go into the next game thinking we can we can build on that and we can um, we can progress, and so Eastley is, is, as you say, the first opportunity this year to um, to to put things right and to to finish the season off well. And as you say, not too many games left in the season, but some, a brilliant opportunity for people to come down to the uh, Burnham to see see the team if they if they've not done so already. Absolutely, um, as I said before, we had a, we had a good crowd when we played at Adams Park, and the girls loved having those fans there, and it, and it and it definitely gives them a boost when things maybe aren't going so well. Obviously, having the sort of the twelfth player <laughs> um, helps, and the crowd can really um, can really be that twelfth player for us. And who who wouldn't enjoy playing in front of nice big crowds? It's the, the girls love playing football, and and they'd like nothing more than to be able to do that in front of some sort of staunch Wickham fans. I'm sure there's lots of Wickham fans that go on a Saturday to uh, Adams Park, and we'd love some of them to come down on a Sunday and cheer on both the um, the first team and the reserves when they play at Burnham too. And is there a real feeling of optimism going into the new year uh, throughout the, the whole team? Yeah, definitely. Um, spirits are high. Um, confidence is high. Um, and the players just want to to do their best and to get on the pitch and show what they really can do. I think they feel that, as they say, the, the results haven't been there. Um, the performances, by and large, have been. And that now they're just determined to make sure that they turn those performances into um, some victories and, and get the rewards that really their, their play and their their hard work really deserves. Great to chat to Dan Weber, who's the assistant manager of Wickham Wanderers Women. Spoke to him uh, just before he jetted off to America for work, but he'll be back very shortly uh, in time uh, to uh, take his place in the dugout for that trip to Eastleigh on Sunday. And of course, we wish Wickham Wanderers Women uh, first team reserves and under 18s all the very best in their upcoming fixtures as well. Turning our attention back to the men's first team now, though, and uh, you might have heard a little earlier on this afternoon, it was confirmed that Daryl Horgan has moved out on loan to League Two Stevenage for the rest of the season. The 
Republic of Ireland winger has made 101 appearances for the Chairboys, with 17 of those coming in the current campaign. Meanwhile, Arnold Matshazi has returned from his loan deal with Slough Town, though Luca Woodhouse has extended his spell with the Rebels until the end of January. Jasper Pattenden, as you probably heard on commentary with Phil recently, is back with the club after his loan with Dorking Wanderers came to an end and Ben Kaminda, uh, his loan at Hamwell Town has also now expired. Uh, now though, as promised a little earlier on, uh, there are two now of <laughs> available parts of an in-depth interview with the manager Gareth Ainsworth taking advantage of the break in games you might have heard uh, Phil's chat with Rob Kuig as well in a sort of mid-season report if you like uh, as the we reach the season uh, the halfway point of the uh, league one season he sat down with the manager as well uh, part two also available uh, on Wanderers TV hopefully <laughs> and hopefully uh, what was mentioned a little later on could be <laughs> taken out of the podcast version but uh, here's a little taster of uh, what you can expect from part one uh, with Phil speaking to Gareth about his two trips to hospital over the festive period unbelievable I saw you know we, we, we went at Peterborough on, on New Year's Day and then my boy Kane had a game yesterday and uh, they, he plays for Maidenhead Academy and they played against all the shot and on some AstroTurf over in all the shot and uh, with 25 minutes to go losing 4-1 he's been absolutely bundled to the ground a big tackle on him um, he is a tough player so I expect it sometimes um, and he's gone down he's got up holding his arm and little did I know he's carried on actually he's played the whole the rest of the game 25 minutes he scored he set one up the game ended 4-4 it was a brilliant game and uh, and Kane at the end of the game his hand is massively swelled up so I thought I better go and get that checked out he's, he's broken arm so he's fractured his arm in that tackle um, he's in a cast now from here to here he's got his mock exams on Monday but um, I'm so proud of him he's carried on for 25 minutes with a broken arm and uh, and scored one even so that eclipses what, even what anything I did you know so he's a tough one but um, after the TJ uh, incident last week you know it was uh, I've been in hospitals as much as I've been on the touchline this week but um, no glad to say he's okay but he's going to miss so much football and uh, gutted for him but um, on, on the TJ front Fantastic news for TJ. You know he's he's well recovered now, and uh, he uh, he got a hell of a bang on the chest, and that's what caused everything. And uh, glad to report that you know there's been no signs or symptoms of anything major since. And uh, and uh, I think this little break now will will do him the world of good as much as all the players who've played in the, over the Christmas period. And uh, poor old Kane will be watching from the uh, the stand and the boxes definitely. But um, the boys need their rest and recovery now, and uh, and hoping uh, in two weeks' time we come back to to football with a with a bang um, but nice to have a, a bit of chill time now it shows your duty of care as a manager obviously we expect to take your son to A&E but <laughs> you went to A&E with, with TJ as well as Keno Doherty the head of medical here as well but that, yeah. that's the side of management that a lot, a lot of people get to see uh, listen I think anyone would have done it you know um, when I saw TJ collapse on the pitch uh, I ran over straight away and I didn't leave his side then until you know we dropped him back in Wickham and, and Kean as well. I can't you know speak highly enough of. Um, we have fantastic medical staff here, you know, and, and the speed that both Kean and, and Dr. Bob Sanger came. I, I think they'd, they'd almost gone back to the dressing room, but the speed they'd come out and and got, got you know the, the care to TJ. I got there and all I could think of was making a a little semicircle around him because of um, the Denmark thing, thinking the last thing anyone wants to do is start filming this or start taking photos let's give him a bit of distance but also let's keep this as private as we can and like I say it ended up that I, I then escorted TJ on his stretcher to the medical room which then went into an ambulance I got in the ambulance with him and, and we ended up at um, Derryford Hospital in Plymouth where, where the sensational NHS like I say doctors brilliant um, everything clear just some slight worries that we, we, we had to look out for but um, safe to say that he's he's fit and he's well and uh, yeah it was a scary moment but um, yeah duty of care for players and, and duty of care for my boy as well but um, I, like I said I think anyone would have done it and uh, just glad to see that TJ's healthy and, and well and uh, I'm sure he'll be taking part I thought he was excellent when he came on you know a real spark on that night and uh, he ran himself into the ground literally you know, so uh, but no no get well soon both of them um, yeah hoping like I say for some uh, rest and recovery now into the boys before we, we report back um, 
and start prepping for the uh, the Sheffield Wednesday game. A taster of the in-depth interview which you can find on Wanderers TV parts one and two uh, available now. Uh, manager Gareth Ainsworth speaking to Phil, who of course is the uh, head of audio and broadcast at the club, host of Ringing the Blues, and of course match commentator uh, for Wanderers TV, and of course us here at Wickham Sound as well. As mentioned, you're probably already aware no Wickham Wanderers fixture this weekend uh, due to play Oxford, who have got uh, FA Cup responsibilities of their own. Uh, we'll be uh, taking on them on Tuesday the 24th before that uh, we host Sheffield Wednesday on Saturday the 14th of January the following Saturday a trip to Bristol Rovers and then after the Oxford game another home game against Fleetwood Town and uh, as I'm sure uh, you realise the uh, the League 2 uh, sorry League 1 <laughs> League 2 uh, the League 1 table uh, is looking pretty healthy as well with Wickham just sitting just outside the playoff places at the moment after uh, 25 games some of the teams in the uh, top part have uh, played a few more but uh, looking pretty healthy hope you've enjoyed the show for this week and uh, that you had a very happy new year as well of course and I uh, look forward to chatting to you at the same time next week on the Wickham Wanderer Show here on Wickham Sound <laughs> <laughs>